guys, Otterpop here. Time to start a new round of patron requests. So um, I've gotten some requests already and I'm just going to start attacking them right away because that's a freaking good idea and I always need to try and collect more content for future videos as much as I possibly can. So the first one I'm starting is actually a continuation kind of of a previous video. In a previous request, I did react to Hot Dogga Season 1, the Hot Dog Saga. Again, it took me way too long to put two and two together, but I reacted to season one, and it's basically by the same people who make uh, puppet history videos. Uh, BuzzFeed Unsolved, I think it is. And there are like, uh, if I'm recalling correctly, like five seasons total. So a patron was like, hey, can you continue this? Go ahead, watch the second season. I'm pretty sure the patron who requested the second season was also requested the first, which, you know, it happens. But you know what? I am very fully invested. Granted, it, it's such a weird and wacky story, but it's in big part due to Ryan and Shane and their energy levels and, well, I mean, especially Ryan's, or not Ryan's, I'm sorry, Shane's energy level at putting the story together and telling it the way that he does. And Ryan just in the background like, what the fuck is going on? So yeah, that is basically what's going on here. I'm reacting to season two and, oh yeah, since this of course is a patron request, let's go ahead and pop up the list of the current list, um, based on the time that I'm editing this video, of the current patrons that are currently supporting me. Thank you guys so much. I have had a lot more patrons lately. I've had a lot more support lately. Some people have been upping their tiers. That is really awesome. You do get some really cool rewards. And of course, the link to my Patreon and to all kinds of other things related to my social media. Those links will be down in the description as per usual. So let's go ahead. Let's start this off. And if I and if I'm wobbling a little bit weirdly, I don't know. I just I've had some weird like dizziness, like just split second dizziness as soon as I get home, and I'm not really sure why. Well, as soon as I as, as soon as I got home today, at least not not every day, just today in particular. I have no idea why, so pff, just ignore that. Should I be looking at a computer screen while I'm feeling that feeling? Probably not. Do I care? Clearly not. Clearly not. I have a quick thing to say here, uh, now that this is up. You know, people love when we bring in little animations. And uh, I, I recall last season we were doing a fun, <laughs> we had a, like a fun, I can't remember, it was something with hot dogs or something. Uh, so I thought I'd bring that back. <laughs> Ryan's just like, just oh bring god. bring back our beloved characters that we all loved so much. Oh you god. wanted them, and based on your feedback, uh, you said, no, more hot dogs. So I did not say that. <laughs> you it's did. Just another lie being said. No, Mr. Mateo. More hot dogs. Honestly, it's, uh, they're just bouncing. All up. right, and we're back. I think we <laughs> last went on the island where the joust had happened with Dan, his wife Rebecca, you their said, son. You, you said you weren't going to do this anymore. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Their son, <laughs> who traveled back in time from the future, he's basically Brandon, a Terminator, and their friend and acclaimed character Gene, who is French fries. Oh, Dan and sweet Brandon. We're a family again, a real family, with a tasty side of Gene. Oh, that's my name. Don't wear it out. Love that Gene. <laughs> oh, were you looking for reaction? Yeah. I, I was actually, I tuned out to be honest. Now damn the hot dog in response <laughs> to that. Of course Ryan zoned Holy out. Holy shit, Gene. Look, everyone, Rebecca's evil sister Pam is dead, I think. Those crabs left her on a log for a beast to consume. It's time for us to put this whole crazy saga behind us and remember what it means to be a family. Brandon says, I just keep looking at Ryan. Three cheers for my hot dad. That means it's like a hot dog version of a dad. You just say hot dad. Like yeah. Hot mom. Oh, I got it. Yeah, you know, yeah. No explanation. You got it. Hop. Hop. What's a hot, what's a a hot dog mom? Falls hot from the sky. <laughs> the hop. No one says hop. Hey, hey, hey. I got a letter. Read it, Gene. Jebra. Moo, it's from my sister, Jebra. Jebra. She's getting married in California, and she wants me to get my old band Wait. back together and play for her wedding. Isn't Gene from the future, band. though? Well, it's a long story, y'all, but I think I'll have time to tell it, because we're going to get that oh boy. band back together, and we're going to play that wedding. This calls for a road trip. Hot Dogger <laughs> 2, Buns on the Run. <laughs> oh, my Dude. God. There's some cool. There's nothing cool about this there. story, so just say music. Oh. I, did you? I, it's like I can feel people. Oh, was that the end? Yeah, that's we're we're in okay. it now. Yeah. He's got to get his band back together. <laughs> oh, he's got to get his band together. You know, he's, he's pretty gotta, good. He's got to do what he's got to do. All right. A road Ryan's, trip. Ryan's oh, man, so road enthusiastic. Trip. That was great. That was fun. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, that was the worst. Buns on the run. Yeah, I, I should have expected a nonsense title like that from Shane. 
<laughs> and Ryan looked like he was just tuning everything out. He 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 looked like no, I I just I just don't want to freaking do this right now. It's like with the first season. The story just jumped around all kinds of places that I just wasn't expecting. It, it's just completely random and chaotic. Way more than South Park ever could be because, you know, South Park episodes have a point and this is just telling a random, wacky, improvisational story, more or less. So, of course, there's gonna be... This This whole season's probably gonna be something like a road trip, isn't it? I, I could see that. And he... and... 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 Gene has to get a band back together while they're on a road trip. I reiterate, wasn't Gene from the future with Brandon? Am I remembering that right? I don't know, it's 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 been a hot second. <laughs> hot dog a second. That sounded awful. Why did I do that? Why why did why did you guys make me do that? You suck. I'm just kidding, you guys are cool. <laughs> And here next comes... Week. Whoa, what's happening down on the bottom of the screen, Ryan? It's happening again. Are they on a train? Somewhere in America, a ramshackle boxcar cruises across the backbone of the nation. Why a train boxcar, Here's Rebecca. though? Boxcar. Gene, what? Wait, quick question. What? Why is Gene getting married? Uh, hang on, we'll the address future? it. We'll address it in this Do you one. Be, you have not heard so of the butterfly effect? Uh, we're, we're addressing it in this one. Okay. Gene, what a joy for us to witness your sister Jebra's wedding. I just hope we make it in time. Oh, you and me both, Becky. Gene, since we have some time to kill on this beautiful boxcar. Who's I'm, this? This is Brandon. <laughs> I'd like to get to know you better. Ask away, baby. What's your full name? Gene. Where are you from? Wait, wait a second. Is this guy has one name? What is he, fucking Sting? He's Gene. <laughs> He's Bono. <laughs> Where are you from? Is Ryan Ooh, gonna give any Idaho, voices? Oh, numbnuts. What's the deal with your band? Sweet Jean and the Risky Fixins? Yes, Sweet Jean and the Risky Fixins. Mm, terrible name. We <laughs> formed in the early 90s when we were all in nursing school. We've won 487 Grammys. I'm with Ryan, and what? stopped the assassination of the hot dog president. Jean, I don't mean to be rude to french fries, but how are we going to your sister's wedding? And how does your band exist currently? If you traveled back in time with my big son, Brandon. Thank you! Oh, what you mean, lady? These people are all real, right? Not ideas incepted into your brain by a witch luring us into a trap. Oh, you're nuts! Our witch days are over, remember? Or I'm not french fries! Wait, wait a second, what? Wait, what the fuck's going on? Nothing, everything's fine. Wait, why, wait, I, why is Gene a witch now? G he's not. Our witch days are- oh, that was a different said our witch days are over. <laughs> your voice wasn't- it wasn't- I was getting almost as lost as Ryan was. The only reason I wasn't completely lost is that I was looking at which characters were talking. Shane absolutely did not change his voice around. Because, he, oh, <laughs> that's just... He, he... Shane is bringing up all kinds of good points, like... And and I was right, by the way. Gene did come from the future with Brandon, so... And Brandon seems to know that this might be a trap by some kind of random witch. That's random. I mean, wasn't like Pam technically, wasn't she technically a witch or something like that? But obviously we the audience know that she's not dead. She was almost eaten by a raccoon that was possessed by the baby son that, baby Brandon that Brandon, oh my god. This, I, I, ah, my brain hurts. Thank goodness that Ryan and I are on the same page though, in that respect. Somewhat, more or less. Beloved. Pretty sure this is a witch trap. Next stop, picking up the first band member in Texas, USA. I got so much great Gene fan art this weekend. Cool. I don't Make know Make sure why. you at Ryan on all those. No, don't he at loves me. Them. Do not at me. At him. Send your best fan art of Ryan giving Gene a hug. What the? <laughs> no, don't do that. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. He'll love it. Do it. Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Daga. A hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Vergara, written by nope, me. Nope, no, wait, no. And I'm adored by viewers right and critics alike. This has been done in spite <laughs> Commissioned by effort. Ryan Vergara. He no, started this. Take that sentence out. <laughs> Texas, somewhere off an old dirt road. Oh my gosh. A dilapidated gosh. watering hole about to close for the evening. Behind the bar, a grizzled old bottle of root beer. Someone walks in. Okay. We're closed. No, don't worry, partner. I'm not looking for much. Just a sarsaparilla and a few words with an old pal. No, we're out of sarsaparilla. 
Not sure about the other stuff. Steven Rootbeer, do you mean to tell me you've forgotten your dearest friend and former bandmate, Gene? I'm critically adored. Wait a second. So this root beer is selling sarsaparilla? Yeah, he said they're all out. But he's a root beer. He works at a bar. But he's a root beer himself, so he's... Are people drinking him? Does he have any root beer left in his bottle? He works at a bar. Well, but do I'm people just... drink the blood out of humans? Well, that's also when a bartender is serving something that's not him. I don't understand what you're You just said here. that he's serving sarsaparilla. We gotta get back to this, Ryan. Do we? You know, I, I think it's favorite questions for the end well, or, he's or submit them for the, the Q&A next week. Are people sipping out of his brain? That's okay. Um, okay. Ah, sarsaparilla is in root beer. It's from the root of the sass, sassafras tree? That's a thing? What the what? So root beer is root beer. I don't know these things, okay? I'm not that big of a science nerd. I also hate root beer. I don't drink most sodas, to be fair. Like, the only sodas I ever drink, even on, even on semi fr I don't even drink soda very often. It's kind of just an occasional thing, or something that I put in an alcoholic beverage. Sprite and ginger ale. That's pretty much it. Those are the only sodas I drink. I don't drink the rest. And root beer, I hate, hate, hate root beer. I don't like it. It's ugh. <laughs> oh, oh god. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna gag just thinking about it. Jeez. Ryan does bring up a good point though. Why is a sentient root beer selling sarsaparilla, and they're out? But he's a root beer. But I don't even know. Mm, can't say the name rattles a tambourine. Look, Stephen. I'm putting the band back together. Like hell you are. Like hell I am. It's my sister, Stephen, Jebra. She's getting married. Needs us to play. I can't do it alone. I need the risky fixins. Well, I... I didn't know french fries had siblings. We sure do. You talked to Melba yet? Ain't the risky fixins without her playing sticks? I'm about to hop on the train and do that very thing, and I'd like to have you along for the ride. All right, but listen here. I'm only doing this under one condition. I'm all ears. You gotta let me lay down some seriously chunky bass lines. No, oh, you got yourself a deal. Now we've got a train to catch. I just noticed the bubbly a effect crow ate in one of my eyes the at the bank bear. last Labor Day, by the way. Nice. That's why I have an eye patch now. Whoa, what a story. That's the end of it? Yeah. The so, band's getting back together. This is getting good. So, just to be clear, yeah. the last... How many episodes have you done on this stupid shit now this season? <laughs> I, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> They've just been conversations about a hypothetical band that doesn't make sense. That's the journey, man. The so band's getting back we're just, together. We've just watched Talking Heads for the past three About episodes. the journey, not the uh, destination. Probably better than the Talking Heads. That's a, you know, it's, a it's critically just... acclaimed band. This, the Risky Fixins are probably even more acclaimed than them. You got any more <laughs> expository dialogue you want to... Push on the audience. Look, they made me keep it expository this season because there was too much action last mm, season. It's okay. hard to animate. That's uh, just a, uh, you know, blame your tools. Shoddy craftsmanship, blame the tools. That's kind of what's happening. <laughs> oh, they, made me, they made me it, tone it down. I couldn't really go that far. So I had to make the dialogue exposition. Uh, that, the studio, man, the studio is pushing me. I'm telling you, I got some good stuff up in my mind. <laughs> this is That's hilarious. I, oh, I love Ryan. <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> First the guitar, now the violin. What the hell? <laughs> End it on that. Put, a, put sad music over it. A slow zoom on me. If you put End that, in, no, no, if you put yeah. that in, you gotta put this part in no, where no, he's no. like, okay, if you put that in, make them be sad <laughs> for a second, it. and then include this part no. where he says, now they're gonna be sad. Include this. I'm Don't gonna make sure this. this goes in the episode. God damn it! Yes! Yes! Well, you know what? It doesn't even Ryan matter. has some say. Really no, no, you can't pull it back like that. No, you can't. I gotta go. You're not fooling me, buddy. You're not fooling anybody. It's been fun, Ryan. You're not fooling me. He just flicked me off out of sight. He flicked me off <laughs> off frame right now. He's flicking me off right now. No, no, I swear. Pan the camera over there. Pan the, no, pan the camera. No, no. Fuck. <laughs>
screen. <laughs> you gonna do it? You gonna do your dumb thing? That was you're, great. you're inviting it now. I don't There's no to... point in fighting it. Why do their shirts say we? Our weekly QA concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog a Hot Dog Saga, commissioned by Ryan Bergara. No, nope, written stop. by me take, and adored you, you, by every single viewer. You should take that sentence out. Okay, you know what? Where There's no we? point. We see no a point lovely, serene pond. Just, uh, just deal with it, Ryan. Jean. You know, them hot dogs on the train sure are terrific. They're a loving family. Compelling. Sort of like something out of an Arthur, Arthur Miller play. Mm, say there, Gene. I don't mean to be rude to French fries, but where in God's blue hell are we? Central Park. And you say this is where we'll find Melba. Suddenly, a voice. You two have got you some nerve showing up around here. The boys look over to see their old pal, Melba Dill. And baby, she's floating. That's a Melba, That's a long time no see. Yes. We're getting the band back together. Mm. Yeah, what the beloved french fries said. <laughs> now I think it's quite clear that I'm comfortable here, floating, as pickles do. I wake up, I float. I float all day. Did I used to float? No, I damn well didn't. I used to play drums for an acclaimed rock and roll band. A band so good that the Beatles, our enemies, quit making music, grew mullets, and opened up a really good pizza shop in Cleveland. <laughs> yes, we were on top of the world. But you let the music get away from you, you idiot men. You blew it all on wine and trampolines. Did it ever occur to you, Stephen Rootbeer, that I loved you and your mustache? Well, I don't anymore. And I see you've shaved your mustache, you idiot. And Gene, you were like a brother to me. But pickles don't have brothers, clearly. And in short, gentlemen, I don't care if you're getting the band back together. You can't. You, you can go to a baseball. The day we broke up was the best day of my life. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to float because that's what pickles do. You need a glass of water after that? That was a long paragraph. That was. But also, why do, you, why do you keep harping on this pickles floating in ponds thing? No, that's not a thing. That's just her character. It's definitively not a thing. Like, this is you trying to bleed your weird sense of reality into let, this, let this even weirder sense of... Let's just pregnant really pause play. This is dramatic. Sure, great. Pregnant pause. Go away. Yeah, do it. It's We're just on the edge of our seats. <laughs> it's just my sister Jenny's <clears throat> wedding is all. Well, I... I didn't know french fries had siblings like that. No, oh, come on, what do you say, Melba? Oh, you idiots. Fine, one last performance. Oh, the risky fixins are officially back on the map. Whatever, there's a raccoon that's been snooping around these parts lately, so I was thinking of leaving anyway. The band is back together, folks. Mm, there's a um, raccoon about. <laughs> I mean, do you want? Some, what do you Man. want? Do you want something from me here? I, yeah. This, the, what instrument does this fry possibly play? Does he have? Does he have hands? I, I can't remember. Are the fries his appendages? Yeah, he's got arms. He does. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you sure? Oh, I guess I don't remember. I Ryan uh, uh, forgot that Gene has arms. Yeah, so if you want to make some fan art of Ryan admiring Gene's arms, <laughs> sure. Yeah, <laughs> go for it. That's what we're going <laughs> yeah. for. This Ryan just accepts it. Can we get out of here? Prepare yourself for possibly the dumbest thing you've heard all week. Here we go. Maybe even your life. Nah. <laughs> all right, our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we both call the Hot Dog, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Steven Bergara, written oh, yeah, by me, name this time. and That's adored funny. by <laughs> every single viewer. How long is this one, roughly? So I could get to, I could prepare myself. It's pretty quick. Good. A Hawaiian resort <clears throat> sausage priest stands Hopefully above it is. the crowd. He speaks. Welcome to the wedding in Hawaii now, everyone. Hawaii, We're what? We're gathered here today to witness the union of two souls, Jebra and Maisie. Before Wait, I, do I thought it was California. Name, Jebra wanted to say a few words. Well, I wanted to thank everyone for making the trip. My brother Gene and his band, the Risky Fixins, who I'm sure we'll hear from at the reception. Oh, did you want us to play? Ha ha ha. Dan and his wife, Rebecca, their big son, Brandon. Nice to meet you. Tony Pepperoni. Hi. Bradley. Uh-huh. The Gherkin Brothers. Love you, Jebra. Tiffany Elizabeth Ellerby. Charmed, I'm sure. The Duke. Aha. Uh -huh. Slippery Mike the Mustard Pile. I could see the squirrel wheel on his thing there, and I could see there's so much more. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Little Mr. B. Happy to be here. Pauline, who is a pretzel? Mmm. Um, uh, Willie the Wacky Wonton? <laughs> Pauline, who isn't a pretzel? What a beautiful day. Mike Soup? <laughs> yep. Queen Meatballs? Hello! A giant possessed raccoon and Rebecca's evil uh. twin sister Pam? Wait a minute, you weren't invited! Oh no! 
Jean, what's happening? <laughs> Jeez. Am, and I'd like to welcome you to hell. Time to die. She is. <clears throat> That's it, right? It's done. <laughs> so uh, you're just uh, you're just ending your thing with silly roll calls, and then yep, slapping it on the internet, calling it a story. Yep. <laughs> How did Pam get there? Oh shit! How did Pam get there? Oh no! Flashback. Now comes the part of the show where he ruins your brain and turns it into mush. Here we go. Apparently, he writes while he's sleepwalking. Our weekly Q and A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Daga, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. A beach in Hawaii. It's weird. There's actually people in this room, and they look like they're the opposite of everything you this just is, described. Oh, we just got a thumbs up. He did that uh, because he wanted to appease a you. Beach. He was actually <laughs> the a beach in Hawaii. <laughs> A wedding has been gripped by terror. I thought it was I California that the wedding was supposed to take place. And a possessed raccoon. Prepare to <clears throat> die. Flash to white. <clears throat> a hall of shadows. A large Flash hooded back. figure sits on a throne. Greetings, master. Explain the raccoon. I am Brandon, master. Son of the hot dog clan. Eaten by my future self. Now possessing a raccoon. Makes sense. <laughs> and what has become of the hot dog clan? The joust did not go as planned. We were nearly fed to crabs. It was a mess. Yep. It was hugely. It was a hugely satisfying finale season. F <laughs> but it was a hugely. It was a hugely satisfying <laughs> season finale. <laughs> I am displeased. Displeased. Narratively rich. The hot dogs. They must be destroyed. We have one last idea, Master. Spill it, Pam. Well, you know that prophecy that every hot dog child hears on their eighth birthday about the hot dog who survives a crab joust and is then tossed into a, the fiery pit of a Hawaiian volcano where their soul is forged by lava into the gauntlet of ultimate power, or gup. What? I mean, a little bit. I just want to see how much longer we got in this. Ah, there's <laughs> gup. A lot of more. Of course. Hmm. Oh, well, yes, I can I'm see how what Shane what to partially align with the narrative thus far. How could there possibly be more? Very <laughs> So your plan then is to drop Dan the hot dog into a volcano, then pro procure the gup for me. Mm, that's right. And we'll drop the rest of the hot dog family too, because fuck them. <laughs> Very well. Pam, I suggest you use your witch hallucinations to guide Jean to Hawaii. Wherever he goes, they will follow. He is a born leader, extremely charismatic. True. <clears throat> Understand, this is your last chance, Pam. If you fail me again, you will know a fate worse than death. But if you succeed, we will rule the world. <laughs> Laugh with me. <laughs> so, watch the sports show, and that's it. Let's See you guys cap it later. All off with the grand finale of the hot dog. Everybody loves this. Our weekly is this going to be it? Is this? Are you tying this bad boy off? Our weekly Q and A concluded. I know no answer. The part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Bergar, written by me and adored by every single viewer. Last time, at least you have the decency to talk fast when you get through this quicker. We learned that Pam and the ghost of Brandon, <laughs> acting under their evil master's orders, lured Jean and the entire hot dog family to this volcano, acting on some kind of prophecy. How did they orchestrate this? Isn't Jean from the future? All of these questions will be answered. Prepare to die. Now hang on a second. What? What gives you the right to interrupt this perfectly delicious wedding? It's all fake, Dan. Delicious wedding. A ploy. Jeans from the <laughs> right? future, remember? These are all witch holograms oh of God. fake memories meant to lure you all to this Hawaiian volcano Ouch. so we could kick you into the lava and kill you forever, as the prophecy dictates. You're telling me that the risky fixings aren't real? No, they're witch holograms. And what about Jebra and Maisie? Jebra's not even a real name. Witch holograms. And all the wedding guests? Witch holograms again, except for Mike Soup. What a beautiful day. 
This whole wedding venue is a hologram. It's actually a witch cave above a volcano. And now I'm gonna pull this lever and hold on one goddamn minute. Maisie, that's right. I may be corn and I may be a witch hologram, but I was conjured to love Jebra. And she's as real to me as anything I've ever known. And you gotta be <laughs> stupid to think that I'm going to let the simple fact Hologram that AI are holograms created by some annoying hot dog witch and her raccoon <clears throat> pal get in the way of our day. The raccoon is actually the ghost of my younger self. I ate him and now he's mad. I don't care, Brandon. Witch lady, Pam, you know whatever that? your deal is, will you press pause on your shit for five minutes? Uh, I, f fine, good. Sausage priest, you're real, marry us. By the power zested in me, I now pronounce you fries and corn. Applause. Beautiful. Is that it? No. Fuck. I'm still gonna <laughs> kill everyone. I don't give a shit, Pam. This is our day. Risky fixins. I know you're mostly holograms, but surely you've been practicing. Play our song. Oh, you got it, ladies. One, two, three, four. I have this recorded, so. We're just gonna wait one minute and 20 seconds for this song to play. We won't hear it here, but um, let me start the stopwatch here. Uh, wait, what? Uh, the song's playing. I have to now imagine a thing I don't want to imagine under any circumstances. <laughs> no witch can say. No witch can say. Which way is the oh, right is way? I feel like this is worse somehow. You just gotta trust <laughs> what you feel in your heart. I don't think I've hated you more than I'm doing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> how things ever come to be. <laughs> like how the hot dog became high art. No shame. An evil hot dog witch is trying to tear us apart. <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you proud of right now? Is that what's happening? Are you proud of this but moment? as long as you've got <laughs> your fingers. <laughs> There's nothing you cannot do. Come witches or raccoons. No, sir, they cannot get to you. <laughs> like previous. Is it really a minute and 20 seconds? Rich, compelling, adored worldwide. But it's hard to relish life. Without your best friends by your side. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it though? Everybody applause Pam. <laughs> Pam. It looks like something's changed with Pam. Oh. This performance has made my heart grow three sizes. Oh, really? It's a Christmas are you the grin. It's yes, a big But no matter no. the size, it's still a witch heart, dingbats. Baby Brandon, pull the lever. <laughs> She pulls, he pulls the lever, uh, he, everybody she, falls, pull, he, and fall. I'm going to scream for all the characters, <laughs> which we can all overlay together. Yeah. Ah! Now that's what I call a cliffhanger. <laughs> I love how one of the next videos that's suggested for this is Ryan being annoyed by the hot dogger for five minutes straight. That's amazing. <laughs> Was the season two shorter than the first one? I don't know. I don't know for sure. It felt like a lot of the episodes were more even in length, except for the last one, which was just a slight bit longer. Anyways, cliffhanger. Yet again. God, I love cliffhangers. They're actually, oh, they're so fun. As much as I might complain about them sometimes, or as much as I might be like, oh no, it's a cliffhanger. I don't want to have to wait for the next one. I don't. I really do love cliffhangers, and I do love writing them too, because it's ah, so good. Actually, for one of my stories, the, fir the first book of a trilogy that I recently finished, or recently drafted at least, I have a great cliffhanger for that one, and I am really happy to explore that in the next book. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm rambling and getting overexcited. Hang on. All right, I'm much better. Moving on. Ryan was definitely much more annoyed at um, all the nonsense for this particular season compared to the last. The last, he was a little bit more active and, you know, trying to, you know, bear with it. But at this point, he kind of just realized that, no, I am here now, unfortunately, and I have to listen to this every single freaking time. The introduction and then the nonsensical story that even he has no idea. He was constantly looking over at Shane like, how long is this? How long? Oh, fuck. It's that long. 
there was much less swearing in the second season, which makes me a little sad. But then again, at the same point, when there was cursing, it was unexpected, and it just made it funny because it was so f few and far between. So... Two sides of a coin. Either way, definitely very entertaining. Shane is definitely a natural storyteller. There's no doubt in my mind. And the more I listen to him make these voices, the more I'm like, yeah, he sounds exactly like Professor Puppet. <laughs> like, it, it, it's definitely the exact same voice. But yeah, Shane is such a storyteller. He's so engaging. He's so creative. And he's actually pretty good at improv. I mean, I would say he does seem to be pretty good at improv, but it does seem a lot of these story bits are planned out ahead of time. My guess is that they are planned out in spurts, like within a couple of days before these videos, episodes, whatever they were, initially released. So he was just kind of coming up with whatever on the spot. And, jeez, I, 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 don't, I don't even know. But he's definitely a storyteller, and he's very energetic, very charismatic. I, I said that about somebody else recently in one of the other requests that I did not that long ago it was it was um the guy from polygon i want to say his name is like brian david gilbert holy crap did i remember that i'm actually impressed with myself but yeah they definitely both have very energetic and charismatic personalities they sort of express that in different ways but they still have those traits. Both of them do, very clearly. And this is just entertaining as heck. The fact that Ryan just kept getting more and more annoyed as time went on, it, I don't, it's such a funny bit. I don't know why. It's just the way he does it. And the fact that he doesn't, like, he... It's clearly not intended to be overplayed. But he's almost trying to, but he's not quite. But he's still trying to, to an extent. In terms of, you know, that sort of annoyed bit. Does that make any sense? I feel like that didn't really make a lot of sense. If that made sense, let me know. If it didn't, that's okay. Sometimes I don't know what I'm saying half the time. So anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. I definitely did. And thanks so much to the patron who requested this. And as usual, until the next video, guys, check you laters.